Hello, welcome. My name is SlugMTG, and this past Tuesday, I participated in the PCT, which I believe stands for Popper Classic Tuesdays. It is a free tournament hosted by Gatherling.com, and depending on how many people sign up each week, because this is a weekly thing every Tuesday, and depending on how many people sign up each week, there is a number of round robin rounds and the top eight people coming out of those rounds moves on to a bracket to see who wins the whole thing. So I participated. I've done these tournaments before. I participated in a couple a few months ago and there were around 16 people in those tournaments. So that's, it's a little small, but it's a good amount of people. And it was a lot of fun to go through. So I thought I would do it again, except this time there were 62 and I was terrified. I was like, oh no, there, there's so many, but I participated, I had a great time, and I would like to go through those games with you guys. The deck list that I used is my hyper budget green stompy list. If you are unfamiliar with that list, I will put a link, probably an annotation as well, to the deck tech video. But without further ado, I have some replays pulled up, so let's go through them. So match one. I actually win the dice roll for once. Whoop. Okay, there we go. Uh, so this is the opening hand that I keep. So, uh, I am on a one land hand. However, I do have Vault Scourge and Young Wolf as one drops and Savage Swipe as well. So I got some removal. I got several one drops. And if I draw a land, then I am pretty much good to go. I have a choice here between Young Wolf and Vault Scourge. I choose Vault Scourge because it is more evasive and I feel like I can get a bit more damage down in the long run. Probably could have used uh, Young Wolf and save the Vault Scourge if I draw a land next turn. That way I can go Forest, Nest Invader, Vault Scourge. But I didn't know what I, what I was drawing and I wanted to try to get as much damage in as possible. So I pass turn to them. They play a Forest and... Going from the statistics from the tournament, uh, looking at the top, it kind of tells you what colors people have registered. Green was the most popular color, so I was expecting to run into the mirror match, uh, except this time it's slivers. So match one up against slivers, and I'm kind of glad I put the vault scourge down. They pass back to us, and we go ahead. And we do draw a second land, so that's really good for us. Uh, we go ahead and swing in. They can't block. And I go ahead and play the Nest Invader. So get that token and pass turn. So we are looking to probably Savage Swipe next turn, get start clearing the field of the Slivers. They play a Sidewinder Sliver, so flanking and Poisonous, they stack on. And a second ver Virulence, second Poison Guy. And they decide not to swing in as uh, we would just kill them. So we end up drawing another River Boa. And we choose to Savage Swipe the sliver that gives flanking, just so we have an easier time actually blocking and we stand a chance of killing their guys. So that pumps up Nest Invader, and I believe I swing with both, yes. So I swing in with both. They choose not to block, and they end up taking five. So I'm up to 20 now. And I go out and play the Young Wolf. Leave up a couple blockers back to them. So they place Sinew Sliver and they don't play a land drop yet. So I'm wondering if they are stuck on two lands. Other slivers do get pumped. So they swing in and I block one of them with the Young Wolf. So I get the Undying trigger. It comes back. I don't mind taking two poison counters here. It. I'm just not too concerned about it. And the fact that I drew a third land means that my river boas can now chump pretty much forever. So I'm really just pretty happy about that. Uh, I go ahead and swing in with both the Vault Scourge and Nest Invader to get more uh, damage off as they are most likely never going to block as long as their slivers have a chance of dying, that is. So I play the land and I play the river boa and I'm looking pretty good here. I have... I can pretty much jump block forever and they play a predatory sliver. So uh, they're now three threes. I can no longer threaten to kill. However, like I said before, I can jump block forever. So I decide to throw out the Eldrazi spawn in Young Wolf because if they die, I can then hunger the Howl pack and buff up uh, my guys immensely. 
Although I do, I, I do do that here. So yes, I go ahead and double block, kill off uh, the one, one of the poison guys and comes back to me. I draw another land, which is not really what I'm hoping for. Once I hit three lands, I'm pretty much good to go for the rest of the game. However, it will let me play the river boa and uh, regenerate both of them. So I can swing in with the 5-5 five, five, and 1-1. One, one. They choose not to block, so they go down to 5. And out comes the river boa, and I have 2 mana left to regenerate for blockers. And they have a journey to nowhere, so... Uh, their only options here are pretty much the Vault Scourge and Young Wolf, and they choose the Young Wolf, understandably so, so that goes away, and they choose not to swing in as they are at a very low life, and the crackback from their creatures being tapped, they would not survive it. So we are a, kind of at a stalemate at this point, and I draw another forest. I, I'm hoping for creatures. I just want creatures. Uh, so I can just swing in with the Vault Scourge as it has flying. They take it, so they are down to four, and they need to draw something to get out of it. And there's another journey to nowhere. So I know exactly where this is going. The Vault Scourge goes away. And I'm not entirely sure what to do at this point. And then I draw another Vault Scourge. So now I know exactly what to do. Out comes another Vault Scourge, and they are once again on the clock. So, out comes another Predatory Sliver. There are four fours, however, they still cannot attack because of the crackback. So, we draw, we draw a Pit Skulk. It's not horrible, it's not great, but it is a creature, so... And we will be able to uh, trigger that Bloodthirst as Vault Scourge swings in they are now down to three and we play the pit skulk we are keeping the forest in hand to kind of bluff like a vines or a hunger of the howl pack and just say that like oh we could have something even though we really don't so out comes another sinew sliver so five fives with poisonous one that's not looking great but they still can't attack so we're kind of just staring at each other at the moment Get a Nest Invader, which is pretty good. That's two two bodies that I can chump with. So there goes another Vault Scourge attack. Down to two, and I play the Nest Invader, and I am just praying and hoping that they do not draw a Journey to Nowhere. So they get a lead the Stampede, and they have uh, they put to hand a Metallic Sliver and Standard Bear. So only two and nothing really worrisome although the standard bear can get annoying uh so i draw draw a wild mongrel it's fine i guess but the important thing is i swing in with my vault scourge they are down to one and they need something so i play the wild mongrel and i probably could have swung in with everybody at that point actually let me see there's one two three four five and i have one two three four five uh eh, they would be forced to block everything but then they're five five so no not quite so wasn't quite at that point so they get another lead the stampede and they concede so i win game one it was kind of weird they're just staring at each other but yeah, so that's game one. So for my sideboard heading into game two, I took out two wild mongrels and two wildwood trackers. While the wildwood trackers are good in the early game, they tend to fall off really hard. And the second their slivers become three threes, the wildwood trackers are they're basically basically going to do nothing for me. And the, with the Wild Mongrels, I'm going to be wanting to play absolutely everything that's in my hand, and I'm basically going to have nothing to discard to them, and there's no Prismatic Strands, that I, at least I don't think there would be any Prismatic Strands to play around. So I drop those two, and I go up two Epic Confrontations to help clear their board of Slivers, and up 
two viridian longbows that way if it does come to another stalemate where we're just kind of staring at each other then i can still at least ping for some damage during the end step so with that change we have game two and we decide to keep this hand it's looking pretty good so we've got another vault scourge that is great i don't know if they brought in their slivers with reach but Vault Scourge is always nice. They lead with Blossoming Sands past the turn to us. So we get that Vault Scourge down. And we look to have a pretty similar turn one. So turn two, they go ahead and play a Muscle Sliver. So already the Lords start coming down. And so we draw a third Forest. That's fine for now, but please no more. And we go ahead and buff up the Vault Scourge to be a 2-2. Two -two. That way we can get in for a bit more damage, and we do not want that Lord sticking around, so we go ahead and Savage Swipe. So we Savage Swipe, swing in for 4, they go down to 17, and we gain 4 life. So not a bad start. And they play a Journey to Nowhere, immediately getting rid of the Vault Scourge. That feels pretty bad. But uh, that's okay, we've got more to play. So we go ahead and play the Wildwood Tracker and the Young Wolf, and we hold up uh, Vines of Vastwood in case anything happens. And they play a Sinew Sliver, so plus one, plus one again, and a Sidewinder Sliver. So blocking is not going to be very good. I draw a Burning Tree Emissary that feels kind of bad at this moment, as it's just a 2-2. Two -two. I can't really do anything with the mana right now, so I hold it in my hand. Maybe I should have played it just to get another creature down, but I do swing in with both of these. And they decide not to block, so that is three more damage, down to 14. And I'm just hoping to draw some gas. And they draw, and they play the standard bearer. That's rough. Uh... My vines are basically useless at this point, and I'm just really hoping to draw a fight spell at this point, as I can't pump my guys, I can't really do anything. I draw a Hunger of the Howl pack, which is probably one of the worst draws I could have at the moment, and the game is starting to slip away from me. I swing in with the Young Wolf, that way if they block, it comes back as a 2-2. They do end up blocking, and it comes back. 2-2, two, two. and I decide to go ahead and play the Burning Tree here just to get another body down. Probably should have done this last turn, but I don't think it makes that much of a difference. And at this point, I'm just hoping, please have a fight spell. Please can I draw a fight spell? And so you play another Sinew Sliver, and I draw a land. So... Things are not looking too good this game. I can't attack. I can pretty much just sit here and hope they get a lead the stampede. So they cast that and they hit metallic, sidewinder, predatory, slivers. Yes, three out of five. That's they basically just refill their hand and it's not looking too good. They start swinging in. I forget what blocks I make here. I choose not to block because I'm at 26. So I can take one attack and I draw another land. So that's not good. And I, I swing out with everything. Kind of a desperation play. As I'm losing this anyway. And then I just scoop because there's nothing I can do. So that was not good. I'm hoping the third game will go my way. But I'm back on the play. So I'm feeling a bit better. And the sideboard changes I do make heading into game three. I drop the remaining two Wildwood trackers as they just aren't that good in this matchup. And I go up to Return to Nature's. So that way I can get rid of the Journey to Nowhere's. As if I had the Vault Scourge, this game might have gone a little differently. Uh, with those changes, I head into the third game and hope for the best. So this is our opening hand. And I am very much liking what I am seeing. We have a pretty fast start with the Young Wolf turn one and then Burning Tree into Pitskulk turn two, assuming that they don't block, which I'm assuming they won't as it slivers and they want to keep their guys. So I go ahead and play out the Young Wolf. And they play a Plated Sliver. So it is a one-two. That's not what I want to see at all, but it's... 
it is what it is. I decide to try my luck anyway and swing in as if they block, then now they have a 2-2 two -two to deal with and they might just take it. Which they do end up doing. So they take the one damage and I am able to get the Burning Tree and Pitskulk out. So four power on turn two on the board. That's pretty good. And I have two Savage Swipes to help clear the way. And they have a Sidewinder Sliver, and they go through their turn without hitting a second land drop. So I figured they're on one land. I might as well start killing some people off. Uh, well, not people, but Sidewinder. Kill the Slivers, okay? So I go ahead, uh, I play the Burning Tree, and I Savage Swipe once to get rid of... Uh, the toughness that way they can't really block anything without something dying so I swing in and they go down to 12 and things are looking really good and they play a metallic sliver yikes still no lands and they pass the turn back and I draw a land but that's fine because now I can return to nature the metallic sliver and savage swipe completely wiping their board and then they just concede from there as even if they drew another land my advantage was just so I was I was so far ahead at that point so we end up winning the first match and I'm feeling feeling pretty good so the second match here we have this as our first opening seven. Not horrible, but it's also not that good. So I end up mulling it away as I didn't have any one drops. Nothing really impressive. Oh, and we are on the draw. So it was just way too slow of a hand for an, for an aggro deck. This is looking a lot better. So I end up keeping this and I bought him a land as we're probably going to draw into one eventually we go ahead and start and they play a forest and it's slivers again so match two we're up against slivers again and i'm like okay okay how many people signed up with slivers so uh turn one vault scourge seems to do pretty well for us so we continue with that trend and we pass it back to them they play a predatory sliver they're off to a pretty good start I choose not to block for obvious reasons and passes back to us and draw a hunger of the howl pack so I swing in for one they can't block it and I end up playing the nest invader so nest invader comes down creates the token I really want to save that and just stack everything on this vault scourge as not all sliverless play journey to nowhere in the main board some people just put it in the sideboard so I'm hoping that they don't have a uh, journey to nowhere and they play a sidewinder sliver followed up by a gem hide sliver and I do not like that gem hide sliver they will be able to dump their entire hand next turn so they swing in for uh, to I block the the poison sliver and uh, the flanking means that I actually don't end up killing it, but that's fine. I want to take as little poison counters as possible, and uh, I draw another elephant guide. So I sack the uh, the token. To get that color colorless to put the elephant guide on the vault scourge and that way it will trigger hunger of the howl pack and i swing in for seven damage and basically the only thing i'm scared of right now is i am dead to a second poison sliver so i'm really hoping they don't hit that uh they play a lead the stampede and i'm really hoping they don't hit one there either I see with the um, Stampede, they hit a Sidewinder, two Sidewinders, a Gem Hide, and two Muscle Slivers. So they hit five Slivers off of that, which is insane, but no Poison Sliver. And that's the thing that I'm worried about the most. So they swing in, 
I go up to six poison counters. And at this point, it's a race. I just have to race them and hope that they don't draw that poison sliver. So I swing in for seven more. They go down to five. If I can survive one turn, then I pretty much have this. So I'm hoping no journey to nowhere, no poison sliver, please. They, oh, so they cast a winding way and they get a plated sliver, a muscle sliver, and a blade back sliver. So they swing in. I make the blocks. There's a lot of flanking triggers. And I go up to eight poison counters and they scoop it up. So barely managed to squeak out, squeak out the win in game one. And then heading into game two, I made the same changes that I made last time. I went down the two wild mongrels and two wildwood trackers. And I went up the two epic confrontations and up the two viridian longbows as getting to a stalemate seems quite likely. So in the second game, this is my opening hand and I decide to keep this, I believe. Yes, I keep it. They put down the Sidewinder Sliver. The only sliver I don't want to see at this point is any Lords or the one that increases the toughness. As with the Viridian Longbow, I would just want to keep pinging them off. Uh, I do draw a Savage Swipe though, so that is very nice. And I play out the Young Wolf, pass it back to them. And so they play a Sidewinder Sliver again, so double flanking. And the Plated Sliver, so can't quite ping things off with uh, the Longbow, but that's kind of to be expected. Uh, I choose to block, so that way my Young Wolf becomes a 2-2 and it turns Savage Swipe on. And it comes back to me and I decide to swing in as they're probably not going to block, which they don't. So they take two. Uh, I play another Young Wolf and I play out the Viridian Longbow so I can start threatening things next turn. Although I mainly just getting creatures down and maybe if they swing I can get another 2-2. There's the Poison Sliver. And so they swing with all of the slivers that they can. I block one of them. Undying trigger happens. Two poison counters. And they pass it back to me. So I'm wondering what to do at this point. Whether I should equip the longbow just to have it. Or if I should savage swipe. As if uh, I swing in and they draw another poison sliver. I'm dead. So... I do Savage Swipe away the Poison Sliver, that way they actually have to get through my life total. And I swing in for 6 damage overall. Oh, no, hold on. I use Hunger the Howl pack, and that is 9 damage. And I'm wondering what they have. They go down to 9. So the Triple Flanking and a Gem Hide. No cards left in hand, so I'm feeling kind of optimistic. They didn't hit any lords. They choose not to swing in, leave everything back to block. And I draw a Savage Swipe, which is perfect. So I Savage Swipe away the Gem Hide as if they get a lead. The worst thing that I see for myself is them drawing a lead the Stampede playing the lead, the Stampede, and then tapping all their slivers to flood their board, and it basically just makes it impossible for me to come back. So I do want to get rid of the Gem High, that way they are a bit more restricted on their mana and what plays they can make. I swing in with both of my Young Wolves, and they choose to jump block. They are down to two slivers. I play the River Boa. And they have a Hunter Sliver, so everything has Provoke. And so, yeah, I got, I have to block with the river boa. I didn't leave any mana open. Wasn't quite expecting the provoke, but oh well, it is what it is. And I draw another land. So that's not horrible because now I can equip and uh, equip the longbow and use the vines of Vastwood. 
So I swing in with both. Uh, they decide to double block. So, well, not double block, but block both of them. And I equip the longbow to uh, young one of the young wolves and pass it back to them. And they just concede. So I win match two, both of them against slivers. I'm wondering if I'm going to hit any more. I'm kind of hoping I'm not just because I would like to play against a variety of decks. So heading into match three, we are 2-0. and I'm pretty excited. And we draw an opening hand. We are on the draw. So this opening hand could be really good and it could be really bad. I decide to keep it, however, as I have the Savage Swipes, I have the Hunger the Hell packs. All I need is a second land and I can really start to get rolling. Uh, they play an Evolving Wild, so I'm not quite sure what deck they're playing yet. I do not draw a land, but I do put out one of my Pit Skulks. They crack it, and whenever I see Snow-Covered Islands, I'm thinking Blue-Red Scred. So that's not the greatest matchup. It can be kind of difficult. So they play an Augur of Bolas, and I don't think I'm swinging in. But uh, I do end up drawing a second land, so I get the second land. I hunger the Hell Pack, the Pit Skulk, and then I Savage Swipe it to get in for, uh, for four damage. I'm not sure if Savage Swiping was the most optimal play, as going up to two power, Augur of Bolas would not be able to block the Pit Skulk anyway. But I do have a second one in hand, which is why I did that. But. Probably should be saving it for what I'm expecting, fairies and whatnot. Uh, so they brainstorm and then Ash Baron shuffle. They and that's when they reveal the swamp. And I'm like, oh, so we're not going up against Scred. It is blue black control pretty much, and they use the snuff out to kill my pit skulk and pass back to me. So. Uh, not many options I have other than playing the Pit Skulk as I drew a Vines of Vastwood, which is pretty good in this matchup. I'm just wish wishing I had a couple more creatures and maybe drawing another land for Elephant Guide, although I don't really want them killing my uh, Pit Skulk in response. So, and then they play the Gurmag. Oh boy, that's a big creature. Uh, all of a sudden, my 1-1 one -one Pit Skulk is not looking so great. I draw a third land, and that's not bad. So I decide uh, to not swing in. I could swing in and attempt to pump up if they choose to block it with my Vines of Vastwood, but I don't want them having anything in response, as then I just get two for one. So I'm kind of on the defensive, on the reactionary at the moment. They brainstorm, and then they play the Delver. They choose not to swing in with their Gurmag Angler, so they're just keeping it back to block at this point. Pass it back to me, and I get a River Boa, which I am feeling great about. I mean, River Boa is here again to be against blue deck so i have the vines of astwood i ha have the regenerate so i'm feeling pretty good about playing it the only thing i want to dodge is a counter spell but they only have one blue open so at least they can't directly counter spell but i do get the river boa out and uh it's sticking so far they don't kill it on my end step uh, i'm hoping obviously for the delver not to flip it does flip as they reveal Ponder. So they play the Ponder. And they swing in with the Delver, or I guess Aberration. The flipped Delver. And they play another Augur of Bolas. And pass it back to us. So we draw another land, which is actually really good right now because we can Elephant Guide and v Vines of Vastwood, which is what I do. Obviously, I target the River Boa with my Elephant Guide, and they have an Echoing Decay, which does get around the Regenerate, unfortunately. However, I do have a Vines of Vastwood, so... 
I do play it. I'm hoping they don't have another kill spell. They only have two cards in hand. Uh, so I swing in for five that they can't do anything about. They go down to seven. I'm hoping they don't have a response to River Boa before I can untap. They make an all out swing. Um, I choose not to block. As I, I have 17 life, I can take this hit. I go down to eight. And they Doom Blade my River Boa. So that feels pretty bad. Although, uh, now I get the Elephant, so it's not a complete loss. I draw a Nest Invader, which isn't horrible. It turns on Hunger of the Howl pack. So I end up playing the Nest Invader. I do want to Hunger of the Howl pack, as then I can just kill them this turn. So... I swing in with both the Pitskulk and the Elephant. I figured I would go for it as if it succeeds, they need a Counterspell right now or else I just win the game. And they have the Dispel. Main board Dispel. So that's a little surprising, but they go down to three. And uh, I just go ahead and Savage Swipe to kill their Aberration now. They only have one card in hand and I don't want them drawing into another Counterspell. I could have saved this for next turn, but I think the risk of them drawing another counterspell is it's not a risk I want to take. And I want to make sure to get rid of the aberration now. Uh, the last card in their hand, however, is a counterspell. So they were just a bunch of removal spells. They swing in for eight. So I do have to block the Gurmag. And I go down to five. I draw a land. That feels really bad. So not feeling too great. I do swing in with the elephant, though, as they are forced to block with their auger. And I have to leave back the pit skulk as a chump blocker. And they cannot make a full swing unless they have removal. Although I am, I am keeping the land in hand to bluff uh, Vines of Vastwood. So they swing in with just the angler, which I'm thinking is a kind of weird, but okay. And so I block. Comes back to my turn. And I draw another land. So I just concede. If I swing in with the elephant, they block. And then Gurmag kills me. If I don't swing in, they swing in with the insect, and after that point, there is nothing I can draw in my entire deck that saves me, and I do lose the first game. Heading into the sideboard, I do take out two wild mongrels, two wildwood trackers, and one hunger of the howl pack to go up three leaf crown dryads to block their delvers and in case they're running fairies although i didn't see any but the flipped delvers are going to be extremely annoying and they're kind of resistant to removal as well and i go up to epic confrontation to help pack in some more removal so with that sideboard i head into the second game we're actually playing first, which is wonderful. And with this opening hand, we have a Savage Swipe, we have a River Boa, we have a One Drop, so things are looking pretty good. I play, I play the Young Wolf, and they have an Evolving Wilds, comes back to me. I draw a Treetop Ambusher, which is pretty good. I swing in with the Young Wolf. I want to save the River Boa until I can actually use its regenerate ability. So I... Put out the treetop ambusher as that's going to help uh, pump through some damage and they go ahead and fetch an island. They play a second island and they play an auger. So it comes back and I pull a burning tree emissary which I am feeling great about. I'm going to be able to swing in for quite a lot this turn. Looking back I probably should have played the burning tree emissary into the savage swipe. That would have allowed me to be a little more aggressive, but I also do have a river boa, so I don't know. I probably should have played it, but oh well, this still works. Oh, that's right. I do hunger of the howl pack, so that's a lot of damage. So that one extra man is not going to waste. They go down to ten life, 
They preordain. And then they cycle Ash Barons for a swamp and they pay for this and they pay the four life for the snuff out. Which isn't horrible. They are to a pretty low life total. I'm hoping to draw a land here, which I do. So that's feeling really good. I swing in for the one damage. I play the forest. And I play the burning tree into the river boa, which is probably their worst nightmare. Uh, so they play the Delver. They play the Delver. And uh, an Aqueduct. So they pass it back to me. And their snuff out, they probably can't afford to snuff out at all. So out comes a Vault Scourge, which I'm feeling pretty good about as well. And I just go ahead, make a full swing. They attempt to double block my burning tree, and I kind of want to just blow them out. So I hunger the hell, pack the burning tree. They apparently do not have a response for it, so I kill both their Delvers. They are down to two, and I play the Vault Scourge as it is a non-black creature. So even Snuff Out can't take care of it. And they have to have so much removal. I, I can still regenerate the River Boa. They have the Gurmag Angler, but that is not going to be enough. So I'm wondering what else they have. But I go ahead, make a full swing. Whatever they have, they have it. They block the burning tree. And they agony warp. So probably should have seen this coming. I'm down to two creatures. They are down to one life. They cannot afford to swing with the Gurmag. And they scoop it up. They do not have the removal. I do not make any changes to the sideboard. Heading into the third game. So this is the opening hand on the draw. I feel really good about this. This is a great hand. I mean, I've got Burning Tree, I've got Nest Invader, I've got Vault Scourge, I've got Young Wolf, I've got Pit Skull. Like, what is not to love with this hand? It's great. So they have a turn one Delver, and I am hoping it doesn't flip. I, whoa, okay, that was fast. I go ahead, play the Young Wolf, pass it back to them, and please don't flip. They reveal Snuff Out, so it flips. Turn one Delver flip, never a good sign and they ponder. They have the swamp, so their snuff out is turned on, and my way to get around that is to basically play so many threats they don't know where to aim it. They decide to swing in though, which is great news for me, as now I can swing in and the Skargan Pitskulk gets turned on. So I draw a land. Not really needed at this point, but okay. I go ahead, swing in with the Young Wolf. No fear of counter spells. I go ahead. I go ahead. Play the Burning Tree. Play the Nest Invader. And sacrifice the token to get the Vault Scourge out. So I could have played the Pit Skulk, but... This was just a better play overall. Let's me get uh, the Nest Invader out early. And... No matter what, I would have gotten the 2-2 two, two, and then the 1-1 one, one as well. And I can always swing in next turn for uh, the Skargan Pitskulk as well. They decide to swing in, which I think is very odd. I choose not to block, and I'm wondering what they have. So they Brainstorm, and they have an Augur of Bolas. So they're going a little on the aggressive side as well. And we draw a Vines of Vastwood, which is wonderful for us. Uh, we play the third forest. We go ahead, swing in with everything. They block the young wolf, so the undying trigger will go off. They go down to 14, and I play the pit skulk. So we have a full board of creatures. This time, they choose not to block. They send it back to us. And we draw a Savage Swipe, and I'm feeling great. The only thing I'm, I am concerned about is whether or not they have a counter spell, but I figured let's at least draw it out, or if they try to use Snuff Out, then we have Vines of Vastwood. 
So they have a direct counter spell. They don't try with the snuff out. So that feels a little bad, but at least we tried. We got out a counter spell and we make a full swing regardless. And whatever they choose to block, they choose to block like that. And because I swung with the Vault Scourge because I have the Vines of Astwood, I know they have a Snuff Out in hand, but Snuff Out only goes for non-black creatures. And because Vault Scourge has that black Phyrexian mana, it is considered a black creature, and therefore Snuff Out cannot target it. So I go ahead, kick the Vines of Astwood, and I kill their Delver, and they are down to 8 life. So they Brainstorm. And then the Echoing Decay, the Vault Scourge. They are sick of that thing. And they pass it back. We get a Treetop Ambusher, which is really good. So we can definitely pump and swing in. Which is exactly what we do, because we want to go on the aggressive path. I cast it for its dash cost. And we swing with everybody. And... I pump up the treetop ambusher itself, that way it won't die and I can continue to do this turn after turn, and they go ahead and concede. So we win the third match. We are 3-0 at this point. I am on top of the world, and I'm hoping the luck will continue. So we head into our fourth match here, and we won the dice roll, which is great. Ooh, okay. So the first hand was apparently garbage, and we mold it. Uh, it clicked a little too fast to see what it was, but... This this hand, this isn't great, but it's not horrible, and I don't think I really want to go down to five, so I keep it. I bought him a land, and I go ahead and play a Wildwood Tracker. Pass the turn. They play Sacred Cat, so I'm wondering, this could be Mono White Heroic. This could also be uh, Selesnya Tethmos. Not sure what it is. Uh, so I go ahead and play the second Wildwood Tracker and the Young Wolf, which we just drew. And I go ahead and swing in. It gets bumped up to a 2-2, and they don't block. Go down to 18. Pass it back to them. And a Seeker of the Way. So still could be either Mono White Heroic or Celestia Tethmos. Uh, we end up drawing the Pit Skulk once it comes back to our turn. Uh, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. I go ahead and make a full swing. Continuing on that aggro path. And they block with the Seeker of the Way and the Sacred Cat. I'm wondering what's up. And Mutagenic Growth is up. So that's that's really bad for us. So they end up casting Mut Mutagenic Growth on their Sacred Cat. And they just wipe us clean. Ow. But we did get through with the Young Wolf, so we cast the Pit Skulk and the Treetop Ambusher. We have no cards in hand. And we pass it back to them. And there's a Hyena Umbra, so it's Mono White Heroic. So at this point, even fight spells won't get rid of them. They have two Hyena Umbras. They swing in with their 5-5 five, five Seeker of the Way. And things are going downhill very quickly. We pull a Pit Skulk. Uh, we choose not to swing in as the Sacred Cat could pretty much kill any one of our creatures. We don't have a lot, and they're up to 26. So swinging in, swinging in doesn't accomplish a lot except for just wiping our board. And there's a Tethmos. So even if we do manage to get rid of something, it's coming right back. Uh, we do choose to block a Sacred Cat with our Undying Wolf, so it comes back as a 2-2. And we draw an Elephant Guide, which is not bad. So we cast Elephant Guide on the Skargan Pit Skulk. Turns it into a 5-5. We decide to swing in, stay on that aggro path, and we knock him down to 23. They get a Cartouche of Solidarity, though. They smack it on the cat. And they are gaining so much life at every turn. It hurts. Well, it doesn't hurt them. It's the opposite of hurting them. And we pull a Wildwood Tracker. Doesn't feel great. I swing in. Last ditch effort. 
They don't block. They go down to a whopping 22 life total. I play the Pit Skulk, the Wildwood Tracker, and I pass it back. They get the Trailblazer. They make a full swing, except with the Vigilance, and I triple block the Seeker of the Way to try to get the Hyena Umbra off of it, as Seeker of the Way is the creature that I am scared of the most, and they have a double cleave, so doesn't matter. I scoop it up there. They got us. They got so much life gain, it was ridiculous. So heading into the second game, I cut the Wild Mongrels and the Treetop Ambushers. It's another game where Prismatic Strands is most likely not going to make an appearance. And the Treetop Ambushers, they do buff, but they have to swing in to get that buff. And oftentimes, I think they'll just be swinging into their death. So I cut those and I put in three Return to Natures to help get rid of those enchantments and two Epic Confrontations for some added removal. And with that, we head into the second game where we see this opening hand and I am wondering. It's got some good one drops. It's got Savage Swipe, but only one land. So we keep it though because of the Savage Swipe and because of those one drops. So we put out the Wildwood Tracker and they pull out the Sacred Cat. So we pull the Savage Swipe and not a second land, so uh, it feels a little bad. I decide to test my luck anyway. As I swing in with the Wildwood Tracker, uh, they choose not to block, which is great news for me. So come the main phase, we play out the Pit Skulk and we pass turn. And next turn we can Savage Swipe. It's a Seeker of the Way, so uh, we are definitely Savage Swiping that. Uh, that went a little fast. I was scared of the mutagenic growth, but I decided it was a risk worth taking as if they had it, we were going to get blown out eventually by it. So I decided to go for it, ended up paying off and we play another land. We swing in for five damage overall. They choose not to block and we play a second pit skulk. Out comes uh, the trailblazer and they have a cartouche of solidarity. I'm not too worried. As I do have another savage swipe. It can't get rid of the trailblazer as it's got six toughness, but it can get rid of some of the other things. Uh, I do play the nest invader. Not sure why I do that pre. Oh, I do that pre combat. That way my wildwood tracker will get pumped up and I swing in with everything that I can. Uh, they do block one of the Pit Skulks. But I have yet another Pit Skulk and I need to keep the pressure on. So I get that down, pass the turn to them and they have a Hyena Umbra on their Sacred Cat. They choose not to swing in. So I uh, come back, I draw a land, I Savage Swipe their Sacred Cat just to get rid of the Hyena Umbra. Get rid of the first strike, and that way it can't also block my pit skulks. So I get rid of the hyena umbra and I make a full swing, leaving back the Eldrazi spawn. And they choose to block there and there. So they go down to seven, and I'm just trying to whittle away as fast as I can, hoping not to draw another land. Uh, they embalm their sacred cat and they use holy light to get rid of the wildwood tracker so our creatures are and the eldrazi spawn creature count is dwindling and i'm hoping to draw something good it's a river boa not bad but also not quite what we were looking for so we swing in with both of our creatures they choose to double block the nest invader to kill it uh, so they trade two creatures for our one, which for them, it's benefiting more. So that feels pretty bad. But then second main phase, we do play a river boa. And we pass it back. So they are down to six life. We're hoping that we can just eke it out somehow. And we play a savage swipe. So I do the savage swipe on the trailblazer. That way, the Skargan Pit Skulk's power will go up to four. And they will not be able to block it. 
However, they have an emerge unscathed and give their trailblazer hex or not hexproof protection from green, which fizzles the savage swipe, which also means that our pit skulk or which also means that the savage swipe does not go off. And just for good measure, they holy light taking away the taking away the river boa and making sure that the pit skulk does not have two power for the swipe and we are left with a measly one one with a land in hand and they go ahead emerge unscathed again with the rebounds and they get in a crow and sky guard so they choose not to swing in and we draw a vault scourge which would have been great earlier not so great now things aren't looking too good it's not impossible but it's not very likely and they choose to hyena umbra they're a crow and sky guard everything has first strike they swing in i choose not to block and i get a young wolf so i swing in with the vault scourge now that their flyer is tapped and they go ahead and take it, go down to five. I play the young wolf, pass it back to them. And the Deathblade Elite. Ugh, I did not want to see that creature. It's going to be able to get rid of the Vault Scourge. But they do decide to make a full swing. I choose to block the trailblazer as i remember their double strike could kill me right now could it yes it could so no uh, i don't think their double strike could kill me i think it'd be left at one life as the trailblazer would go up to be a five nine and then yeah deal 10 damage through that and then only three with the sky guard but basically at one not where i want to be so i choose to block comes back as a two two and we move in. I draw a Hunger of the Howl pack. Not quite what I'm hoping for, but I do go ahead and swing out with everything just to force a block with the Deathblade Elite. And at this point, if they have the double strike, they win no matter what. I'm just trying to play. I'm playing to win, not playing to not lose, if that makes sense. And my only out is just swinging out and hoping that they don't have the double strike or a bunch of things to target. And they play out another trailblazer. And they swing in with everything, so it's not looking too good. They provoke the Vault Scourge, uh, although they choose not to untap it. I think that's how provoke works. I think provoke untaps, but oh well. The point is, is I don't block with the Vault Scourge, and they have the double cleave, so that is game. And I'm handed, and just just for fun, I go ahead and put Hunger of the Howl Pack on their creature, because why not? And I'm handed my first loss, so I am 3-1 right now. So despite losing that game, I'm or that match, I am still quite excited, as overall I am in 7th place after the 4th round. And if I win this next round, I have a very, very good chance I'm almost guaranteed to make it into the top eight. And even if I lose next round, if the right people lose as well, I still have a chance of making it into the top eight. So heading into the final round of the round robin, we are on the draw and we have this as our opening hand. It's not horrible, it's a little slow, but we go ahead and keep it anyway. We have the pit skulk, but we also have the ambusher as well to help buff it up. And the opponent plays a forest and they play a Ceruli caretaker. And I immediately know this is defender combo. And I hate going against this deck. So I'm not looking forward to these next couple games. The reason why is I don't know how to take this deck down. I never know what to do against it, but I figured Scargan Pitskulk is a good place to start as pretty much everything they have is either one or zero power, and Scargan Pitskulk is going to be able to get in pretty much unimpeded. 
So they play out the Overgrown Battlement and the Kyrion Ranger, and I immediately want to start killing that Overgrown Battlements or the Kyrion Ranger. I never know which one to get rid of, but I'm probably looking at the Battlements. So I go ahead and swing in with the Pit Skulk. They choose not to block, and I play the Treetop Ambusher. My plan for next turn is hoping they don't go off, and I can go ahead and Savage Swipe the Battlements or the Kyrion Ranger. So they have the Crashing Drawbridge, and they go ahead and untap their Overgrown Battlement. They have a Winding Way, and from this Winding Way, they grab another Overgrown Battlement, and that's just horrible, because now if I kill their one Overgrown Battlement, they'll have another one, but if I kill the Curion Ranger, then they'll still have two. So no matter what I do, they are going to be able to tap Overgrown Battlement at least twice, gaining so much mana. And they have a second Crashing Drawbridge, and they have the Mnemonic Wall. Well, I don't know where the game log is. It kind of disappeared. But they grabbed something back with the Mnemonic Wall. I'm sure it was important. Completely forget what it was. Accidentally clicked through. But oh well, they grabbed something back. Maybe it was a Winding Way. But they pass it back to us. And so I draw another treetop ambusher, which isn't bad, helps me go a little more aggro. So I'm wondering what to get rid of here. And I choose to kill off the Curion Ranger just to get rid of untapping things. The Overgrown Battlement is going to give so much mana anyway, and the Curion Ranger is the most flexible. So in my mind, that's what I get rid of. But honestly, I have no idea what to do against this deck. I hardly ever run against it, but every single time I do, I... They just always seem to combo out so quick. But I go ahead and swing in for both. So with Treetop Ambusher, I choose to uh, pump up the Pit Skulk. If they choose to block the Treetop Ambusher, doesn't matter what they choose to block with, it will die. So they choose not to block. They go down to 13, and I play a second Treetop Ambusher. Keep the pressure on. Uh, so they play their second Overgrown Battlement, and they tap for 5 mana. And they play lead the stampede. Okay, where is the game chat? Why? It's not. It just says hide game log. I'm like, no, I want it. We don't get a game log. I don't understand magic online. I don't, whatever. But they get a lead the stampede. I'm sure they pull some very nice things from it. And they get another lead the stampede. So why not? They're going. And they give everything haste with the overgrown battle. Or. Yeah, so they tap the Overgrown Battlement, it now has haste from the Crashing Drawbridge, they tap it for even more mana, they get the Ceruli Caretakers, they get a Wall of Roots, and they are just going nuts here. I'm wondering, is this going to be a turn 3 kill from them? They play a Curion Ranger, they give everything haste, or no, this is turn 4, I believe. So turn 4 for them, turn 3 for us, they get the drift of phantasms they transmute it they get the freed from the real and at this point they have infinite mana i'm just waiting for their payoff card if they have a payoff card i'll scoop so they play the crashing drawbridge and they are just gaining mana they transmute drift of phantasms again and there is their blood right invoker so at that point Game's over, and I just concede from there. So turn four combo kill from Walls. I don't know if there's much I could have done there. Unfortunately, with the second Overgrown Battlement that they got, that was pretty much just game over in my mind because there's no way I can stop their ludicrous amounts of mana. If they had kept with just one, if they hadn't found it, I probably would have just killed their other overgrown battlements and hope that they didn't draw anything but rough match rough match or just rough game i don't think mono green aggro has a good matchup anyway just because everything has such a big butt but oh uh, well so heading into the second game i drop two wild mongrels and i pick up two epic confrontations just to help kill anything that i could the more i can clear the their field the better but things are looking a little rough so heading into the second game, hey, the chat and game log is back. Would have been nice last game. Oh, well. And we have our first opening hand here. I have one land, 
Vault Scourge. I do have a Savage Swipe, but I choose not to keep this because I don't have anything to turn Savage Swipe on. Or basically, I'm super reliant on drawing a second land. That is a risk that I'm just not really taking right now because if I go even just two turns without drawing a land, the game is pretty much automatically over. The best thing I can do is play Vault Scourge turn one, turn turn two, play Hunger of the Hell Pack on the Vault Scourge, swing in for two damage, and then on turn three, use a Savage Swipe to then kill one thing. And I don't think this hand is fast enough. I don't think it's good enough. It's super reliant on drawing a second land. And if I don't, the game is pretty much over. So I mold and still a one lander, but I do have a couple one drops and I don't really want to go down to five. So I'm feel like I'm pretty much forced to keep this. Maybe the first hand would have been better, but it's it's hard to tell. Not feeling super great, but the match is definitely not over. The opponent had a really good start last game and they could just as easily not have a good start this game. So they play an Elvish Mystic, pass back to me. I do draw a second land, which is very nice. So I go ahead, swing, and I should have, or no, I guess I want to play the uh, Pit Skulk. So I go ahead, play the Pit Skulk, and I go ahead and pass turn. I'm trying to hold the Vines of Astwood up, that way in case they do Freed from the Reel or anything like that, I'm going to try to keep it up as much as possible. I can make that fall off. They have an Overgrown Battlement. And I draw a third Forest, which allows me to keep Vines of Astwood up. So I go ahead, uh, play the Treetop Ambusher for its dash cost, as with those three lands, I'm going to be able to keep replaying it, and I don't really have anything else in hand that I want to play right now. So this allows me to get the most amount of damage out the fastest. So I go ahead, make a full swing. Whatever they choose to block with, they block, and they choose to block the Wildwood Tracker. They take five damage. They are down to 14, and pass back. So they go ahead play a caretaker and a winding way this time thank you chat log for deciding to uh be present this time we will be able to see what they get and they end up hitting an overgrown battlement and curion ranger so now they just have all the mana in the world once again Coming back to us, we draw another land, which is really not something we want. At this point, the best thing for us would be Savage Swipe. I just want four Savage Swipes in a row. Is that too much to ask for? Apparently it is, but we go ahead and cast the Treetop Ambusher for the dash cost. We swing in. Everything is going, and whatever they choose to block, they block. So they tap the Elvish Mystic twice for a moment's peace, and this is pretty much game over at this point. Slowing us down by that much is just really hard to come back from, and we just pass turn after that. Not much we can do. So they play the drawbridge and they play the grizzly, which is pretty much the last thing I want to see because now they're going to be able to just draw so many cards off of it. And the bat the battlement isn't grabbing them as much mana as it did last game as they only have four defenders right now. So it's not completely out of control, but they they activate the Vivian's grizzly and they have the leaf collar. They activate uh, the Grizzly again, and this time they don't hit anything, and they pass it back. So we still have a bit of a chance, and at this point, my biggest goal is to make them burn the moment's piece. If I can do that, then I, I can still do something. So I play everything out. Uh, I play the tree 
top ambusher normally uh because i'm going to try to make them burn the moments piece this turn i swing in with both of them and they choose to block this is where i knew i had somewhat of an opening to try to make them burn the moments piece because they don't have many defenders out right now and if i can kill one of their defenders that is so much mana that they are losing and i know they know that so i hunger the howl pack to uh buff up the power that way it uh the wildwood tracker will end up killing the caretaker and the curion ranger and i make them blow the moment's piece so that is exactly what i wanted them to do and i'm just crossing my fingers that this is going to be enough so they go ahead gets back to their turn and they just start activating the Vivian's Grizzly over and over again. They don't hit anything. They don't hit anything. Oh, excuse me. They hit one Kyrion Ranger. And uh, they pass it back to us. So I'm going to try to deal as much damage as physically possible. I swing in with absolutely everything. And I buff up the Pit Skulk, the Wildwood Trackers go up, and they order their blocks like this. And I have a couple of decisions to make. I can use the Vines of Vastwood to pump up the Pit Skulk to deal 7 damage of them to them and bring them down to 7, except then it's still going to be 3 turns before I can kill them, assuming they actually have blockers. Or I can pump up one of my attackers and kill, potentially kill, I don't know if they have another uh, moments piece in hand, but potentially kill one of their creatures, which is what I end up deciding to do. I kick Vines of Vastwood and I try to kill the Vivian's Grizzly as that is their way of digging through their deck and getting to their win conditions. And I just need to, to delay that as long as possible. So... They do not have a response for it. The Vivian's Grizzly goes away. I play the Young Wolf. They're down to 11, and I pass it back to them. And I don't know what they have at this point. I'm hoping it's nothing. They have a lead the Stampede. So maybe killing Vivian's Grizzly wasn't the best decision. And they end up hitting Axebane, Drift of Phantasm, Cerule Caretaker, Carrion Ranger, and Avacyn's Pilgrim. They hit five creatures five out of five again this is the second time that lee the stampede has hit five out of five against us so that does not feel good but they play the caretaker the axe bane guardian they activate their overgrown give everything haste they add some blue mana and they transmute drift of phantasm and they get the Galvanic Alchemist. So at this point, they have infinite mana of any color. But I don't know if they have a win condition. So I'm kind of waiting for that to see if they have a win condition. They have a Reaping the Graves to get back the Vivian's Grizzly. Dig through their entire deck for their win condition. And that's it. So I end up losing the fourth and fifth match. From what I can tell, those two matchups with Mono White Heroic and Wall Combo, these are two more difficult matchups. As with Mono White Heroic, they just have Totem Armor, First Strike, it's hard to get through. And with the Wall Combo, they just have a bunch of big blockers that we can struggle to get through. Like I said before, we are not 100% out yet if the right people lose and the right people win we have a very very slim chance of getting into the top eight and so after waiting for everyone to finish their matches the top eight gets posted and i find myself in 11th place so i missed out on the top eight i barely didn't make it into the top 10 
but honestly I was pretty happy this is my first tournament in months and I had a lot of fun and I did a lot better than I was expecting myself to I mean out of 62 people I got 11th and I'm pretty proud of that honestly so those were all my matches I think I played decently well I know there were some misplays there, but I was super nervous and I was basically just sweating bullets the entire time. So I hope uh, I didn't misplay it too badly, but I'm sure you nice and lovely people will be more than happy to tell me of all the mistakes I made throughout the tournament, which honestly I don't mind. It's how I get better. So if you would have done anything different, let me know in the comments down below. I am definitely going to be trying to make it to more of these tournaments as it was a lot of fun. I would highly re recommend checking out these tournaments. Participate in them if you want to. It's a lot of fun. But anyway, I want to thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to watch my video. I really do appreciate it. But now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to set my sights on the top eight. Bye!